Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. Anthony Albanese wanted bipartisan support for the voice to parliament. Instead, he's been met with increasing political divisions. Today, Radio National Breakfast host Patricia Carvelis on whether the government can convince Australians to vote yes without support across the parliament. PK, this year we will be heading to vote in a referendum to legally enshrine Indigenous voices to the parliament. And in the lead up to that, there's going to be a lot of noise, isn't there? A lot of debate. And we're already seeing, aren't we, that it's pretty confusing. Oh, yeah. And already, uh, if you're just sort of entering this debate uh, superficially, you're probably a little confused. And I think that's entirely understandable. Mm. In fact, I think some people want you to be confused. Yeah. Uh, I think it helps anyone campaigning against a referendum for there to be as much confusion as possible. Labor went to the election with this as one of its main platforms. They said consistently that they would do this if they were elected. And the Prime Minister made that even more clear in July last year where he announced at the Gama conference, which is a big Indigenous conference in Arnhem Land, that he wanted it to be a simple, clear referendum question and he proposed the draft question, which is, do, do you support, support an, alteration an alteration to the constitution, to the constitution that establishes that an establishes Aboriginal and Torres, Torres Strait Islander voice? and Torres Strait Islander voice. A straightforward proposition, a simple principle, a question from the heart. And that's where we're at now. Mm. We don't know a lot more still, but what we do know is that the government is committing definitely to having this referendum this year. Do, do you think that's a clear and simple question, PK? Do people understand what it is? I think it is a clear question. Whether people understand what it is is different, though. You can have a clear question, but still there's confusion around what it means, yeah. right? And I think that's reasonable. I don't think most people really think every day about the constitution and nor do they have to. <laughs> I notice that people are very confused about what a constitution is, what's in our constitution. And so probably there are a lot of people who are confused about this more broadly because they don't necessarily have a full understanding about the history here. Um, but either way, to have a constitutional change, you need to get the majority vote for the country and the majority of states mm. in the country. So it's known as the double majority. Not an easy thing to do no. um, and not an easy thing to achieve. And so actually, if it gets bogged down, it makes it really hard. Let's have a look, PK, at the positions of the parties then, of the politics of this. We know late last year the National Party said it would be voting no. And it was a difficult decision that we got to. We felt that put it, locking it into the Constitution also locks in future generations, uh, that if it's not successful, that it would be better to try and continue to, to close that gap outside constitutional change. The Nationals leader David Littleproud said he doesn't think that actually this voice to parliament will help close the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. How does he know that? Well, if uh, my job is to be factual and, and the fact is he doesn't know that because it hasn't happened. Mm. But to be fair, we also don't know that it will close the gap. <laughs> we don't know either because we haven't had it. Mm. And we also haven't had it enshrined in the constitution. At the same time, the Yes campaign is arguing it will close the gap or those who are more conservative in the Yes campaign are saying, well, it's our best shot to close the gap, right? But what it does do is allow uh, the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders to be heard about policy that affects their own lives. And what we do know is that when politicians who are not Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are entrenched on the ground in communities make policy in Canberra, well, I don't think it's hard to see the failure. Just look at different uh, closing the gap targets and failures there. Mm, so the Nationals are a no. What about the Liberal Party? So they don't have a formal position, the Liberal Party, uh, but they're doing more 
questioning than answering. And I suppose the, the, the point to make there is that given this will be determined by the parliament. So if there was a yes vote, the parliament would design whatever this voice would look like. Uh, the Liberals could be quite active in that, right? They could be very involved in that because it's the parliament that will decide. What's wrong with a, an advisory body like The Voice to help come up with some better solutions? Well, David, uh, the short answer is uh, there's nothing wrong with an advisory body and in the last parliament uh, we brought forward... Many questions are being asked by Peter Dutton, the opposition leader. He's released a letter with 15 questions for Anthony Albanese to answer uh, before Australians go to the polls. What's new is that Peter Dutton has now uh, accepted an invitation from the Referendum Working Group. He will ask his questions. They will provide him information. That's happening at the mm. end of this week. So that's a big deal. And I think that's a promising sign, actually. Uh, but at this stage, the Liberals don't have a position, although they don't sound to me to be overly enthusiastic about the idea. Australian wants to see a better outcome for Indigenous Australians. I don't want to see a situation where the situation deteriorates over coming years because we've created a great big new bureaucracy. I want to make sure that there is a system in place which is going to improve the arrangements for people on the ground. No, so it could be a no from the Liberals, but we don't know yet. So tell me about the Greens and the Independents then, because they'll be important. I'll start with the Independents first and then we'll move to the Greens mm -hmm. because the Greens are a little more complicated. The Independents, the Teal Independents, have all been strong supporters of the Uluru Statement from the Heart and also the strategy that the Yes campaign is embracing. So they say, no, all this detail shouldn't be released. It has to be a simple question and then later the Parliament will design it and they want to be part of that. You ask me about the Greens, that's a whole lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Greens will meet this week as a party room to determine their position. Uh, and I, I have some pretty strong predictions on the outcome there. We know where it's going because they've now formally done essentially a deal with Lydia Thorpe, who is their official spokesperson on Indigenous affairs and is an Indigenous Victorian woman. She's very, very, very concerned about The Voice, isn't a big fan of The Voice, mm -hmm. uh, has been speaking out about The Voice. She basically said it was a waste of money. Do we want to become an advisory body to the colonial system? No! We deserve better than that! And so they've done a deal where she can potentially go it alone if she wants to say no to it, mm. but that the rest of the Greens look to me, based on my conversations, to be moving towards signing up to campaigning for a yes vote. They will, however, uh, to try and deal with the concerns of Lydia Thorpe, still push for more emphasis on treaty so they can look like they are being distinctive, but they will not ultimately, uh, at the sort of Adam Bant leadership level, campaign against the voice is my understanding from my conversations. Mm. But whether Lydia Thorpe does, that's still to be determined. She hasn't formally said she'll campaign no, although again, a bit like the Libs, if you listen to everything she says, she doesn't sound to me to be a great lover of the voice or the voice idea. I spoke to Mark Dreyfus, I said, Dreyfus, you prove that this doesn't feed our sovereignty. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. It still remains. I have not got a guarantee that our sovereignty will not be ceded if we go into the colonial constitution. I heard Tom Karma on your program last week He's the co-chair, of course, of the design group for The Voice to Parliament. And I think he was saying, really, he was a bit offended by Lydia Thorpe's approach to this. Yeah, he did say he was offended. And he's, mm. Tom Karma is um, such a well-known person in Indigenous Affairs and now is Senior Australian of the Year, of course. And we'll go down and, and address, um, you know, the other matters. Truth-telling, that's already progressing. Treaty, a bigger issue, although some state and, and territory governments are already looking at um, uh, treaties within their own jurisdictions. Yeah, look, I, 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 I feel a bit offended, you know, whether the determination or whether you want to support or not support a voice is predetermined by by whether you, you, you address some of the other issues in Indigenous affairs. Yeah, he said he was offended. There are others who are uh, red hot with rage, I'll be honest, who've told me they're very upset by mm. the way that Lydia Thorpe has played this. I uh, would characterise the, the black-green opposition to the majority of Aboriginal people who've made their views clear, jurisdiction by jurisdiction, 
as, you know, schoolyard bullies and uh, far left radicals who will never be satisfied with anything. But, you know, she has some support among some members of the Indigenous community who don't like this idea. And that's that's true. It's about how big that view is. That's the real question. Mm. And if you look at all of the public evidence we have, which is all we can rely on as reporters and people who cover this, I think the consensus is that the majority of Aboriginal Australia appears to be in favour of this idea, but that doesn't mean that there might not be a, a significant group of Indigenous Australians who, who aren't big fans of it because they want a more radical or, or stronger approach. It's pretty uh, pretty messy, really, by the sounds of all of this. Ah, Anyway, let me ask. It's going to be hard, though, isn't it, for Anthony Albanese? It looks like he won't have bipartisan support. The Nationals aren't in, and it looks like the Liberal Party might be a no too, although we don't know yet. But ideally, bipartisan support is what he would have wanted. Absolutely. If you look at the history of referendums in our country, which is all we can do to try and learn the lessons for the future. We learn through history, right? It is different. We have a different world and different ways of getting information, but there have been 44 proposals for constitutional change and only eight have passed. And guess what? Not surprisingly, they've had to have bipartisan political support, so Mm. strong political support across the political spectrum for them to be successful. So is this risky Oh, of course it is. Mm, so what's the government's tactic going to be now? Because it desperately needs a yes vote. There's a lot at stake here. And I see now there's even an organised no committee that's being formed. I mean, what now for Anthony Albanese? The waters are muddy. The message is confusing. How is he going to gain back the narrative here? That's a great question and I can only give you my insights uh, because it hasn't happened yet, but I do think the government is very aware that it needs to provide more information, but they need to really cut through and make it simple. So their job is going to be to do that. Then they've got coming up uh, in February a week of action, which is their big launch, campaign launch to push the yes case. So yes, he needs to, as does the yes campaign, try to really, really hone their message because if they don't, they they really risk confusing people and losing. But whether it will be enough will be the big question. And I, I don't know that yet. I don't mm. know whether it will be enough to appease those who have too many misgivings. Patricia Carvelis is the host of Radio National Breakfast. Anthony Albanese has committed to holding the Voice to Parliament referendum in the second half of this year, although is yet to announce a date. It's compulsory to vote. If you want to hear more about the detail of what constitutional change there would be, we covered that on January the 26th, and that's in your feed. This episode was produced by Sydney Peed and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free. 